Hey guys, great to have you join us. Thanks for our weekly, thanks for making it to our weekly little webcast here for the Saab community. We're all back from the Saab Owners Convention and mm -hmm. excited to tell you about it. I'm Lee Kelso. I'm Mark Romisher. And this week, we're going to have a recap of the show we experienced last week firsthand in Albany, New York. What a show. What a turnout. I can't describe how many people in Sobs were there. It was absolute joy. And it was fun meeting all kinds of new people. First people I've seen for the first time. Cars I've seen for the first time. It was absolutely incredible, wonderful experience all the way around. And we actually have a, a guest today, Daniel Cahill from the Saab uh, Club of North America, going to talk to us about uh, some of the things that happened during the convention, as well as predicting what's to come next year. Yeah, so this shot really kind of gives you an indication that it was a big crowd, a great turnout, and boy, some really awesome cars out there, Mark. And uh, there just was a little bit of everything out there. Uh, it was really fun to see very uh, absolutely gosh, cars of all ages, all we different had, conditions. Oh, man, it was amazing. We had 99s, 900s, 93s, 95s. Uh, I mean, everything in between, every iteration, options and, and styles of cars and how people approach getting their cars put together. Um, you know, we saw all kinds of different uh, modifications. We saw, you know, restorations gone so wonderfully well. Um, we saw everyone's personal approach to their Saab even. And that's the best part. You get to see everyone's um, creative juices flowing. You get to see the representation of how they feel about their Saab. And it's a wonderful experience to share. Um, absolutely. Uh, all the details that you see on all the different cars, the little nuances, the little embroidered thing here, there in the seat, the little badges here on the grill, um, the little uh, uh, emblazoned uh, things on the headlights and, and the grills around the car. It's just so many details, so many things that we could see and so many different styles of sobs. I mean, we're so used to seeing one thing. This show taught us that the people coming to the shows are just so different and so unified at the same time. It was such a wonderful experience. And uh, it, it, <laughs> the whole time I was there, it, it was, it was just, I was just going from place to place. Like I just couldn't help myself. I was everywhere all over this meet new people is awesome. Yeah, it was uh, very well said. Uh, it was great. Let me, if you guys, uh, for those of you who couldn't make it, not every Saab fan could possibly mm -hmm. be there, but uh, let's give just a little quick taste of what it felt like to be on the show floor, so to speak. Absolutely. 2010 cross wheel drive 2.0 big turbo. This is a 1959 Saab 93B. By that point, the cars were good enough and popular enough that they were selling a number of them, especially in the U.S. This car, in relation to my character, is I love anything that's the way it was when it was new. This is a 2006 uh, Saab 93 convertible Aero. Um, it has the uh, it's the anniversary edition, celebrating the 20th year anniversary of the convertible in the Saab uh, uh, collection. And this particular example happens to be number 11. Yeah, so there you go. That was uh, that was pretty cool with uh, all those cars and so much different technology. Watching how the Saab brand shifted through the years, moved up in market scale. I mean, really, it was interesting talking to these guys and learning so much more about these cars. And I particularly uh, loved a lot of the uh, the vintage cars that were there. So that was very cool. Hey, we're going to welcome to the program Daniel Cahill. Uh, he is the vice president of the Saab Club of North Amer North America. Good job, Daniel. You, know, you guys put on a great convention. Well, thanks, Lee and Mark, for ha having me. And uh, certainly, it was it was a group effort with the the volunteer board that runs the Sop Club of North America. It's a handful of us spread out over numerous time zones in various states, so it's it's uh, definitely a large test to uh, to take on. But we all enjoy it, and every time, uh, as grumpy as we get leading up to it and pulling it off, we always uh, have a high five or a hug afterward. And and uh, have uh, leave, leave on leave on a high note um, after all after all the work is was is done. Just because, as Mark was alluding to um, a moment ago, really the people uh, make the show. <clears throat> and I've learned that over the course of time. You think car show, of course. Well, where's the cars? 
But um, as, as they appear, of course, they come with people. And uh, I'll tell a quick story that uh, makes me very happy um, about uh, uh, some people that I met at, at the SOC. Older couple that had a vegan in. I think they live in, in uh, Maryland. And I've met them once or twice before at various shows. And they brought their lightning blue vegan. Of course, I'm excited about that. I own one of those cars myself. And so we were just chatting inside the building. And I said, wait, what? Lightning blue vegan? And they're like, yeah. And I go, I just need a tour. Let's just go. And so the three of us walk outside and you know, 30 minutes later and I'm still talking vegan and they're asking me questions and we're opening the hood and we're doing all that fun stuff. And I totally lost track of whatever task I was probably in the middle of, but it's all great. And the point of the story is um, they're asking me about how concourse works and I was encouraging them to enter it. And uh, they said, well, I don't know. The only thing missing is my badge on the back. And I look around back and I go, well, yeah, that's true. I don't know. That's a hard one to find. It's a little bit rare for the 99 with the, with the Scania on it as well. So I, I said, well, you know, there's got to be somebody here. Let me get your name. I'll write down your uh, email address and maybe I'll follow up with you in, in the future. See if we can one day perhaps find you a badge. Oh, that'd be great. So exchange stuff. And, to, and they went on their day and, and having a good afternoon. Well, probably about three hours later, I'm talking with yet another buddy um, from Florida this time. And he just mentioned how he was uh, trying to get ready for the show and ran short on time. He was going to bring more parts to sell and things like that. We all love swapping parts and, and picking through stuff. And he goes, well, I just bought a handful of things. So I was like, oh, really? What'd you bring us? Oh, it's nothing. I just got a couple things in my room and got this, uh, you know, this Scania badge and stuff here. I thought maybe somebody would want it. Wait, what'd you just say? And he goes, and I guess, oh yeah, I have a vegan Scania badge. And I'm like, are you kidding? And sure enough, he had one in his hotel room for the exact year model of their car. I texted the, the lady and her husband at 11 o'clock that night. I said, sorry for the late text, but this is very important. And uh, we found him a badge. They slapped that bad badge on their car, got it all waxed up, and they actually won the concourse. And so oh, awesome. uh, I, just by total chance, I had nothing to do with the judging. I am not a concourse judge, but I, uh, I didn't even know until I was reading off the announcements. So I just thought that was an awesome story. And it really goes to show you when you get all the sob nerds together, good things happen. So <laughs> that's awesome. Well, what I want to do here is we're going to talk about the convention a bit, Daniel. And while that happens, we're just going to let roll here the presentation that you gave at the awards dinner so everybody can see who won cool. concourse and what categories and, and all the different categories. So while that plays, um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this convention and how it was different. The crowd was just tremendous. It was. We had a lot of factors uh, uh, in our favor, really. Of course, um, obvious, obviously, and there is technically still a pandemic. And we were respectful to that, and we uh, followed all local protocols and things in place. And I think everybody was generally responsible. Um, the car, the skies uh, kind of parted, the clouds parted for us, so to speak, um, towards uh, uh, early summer as New York released restrictions. So I think that made a lot of people a lot more comfortable. And um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of people that hadn't been out to any event, obviously, with 20 being canceled for basically our entire generation and the world for that matter. Um, so we were supposed to have this show in, in July of 20 and we began planning it um, the prior year. So all of that got bumped. We did pull off the unconvention, which was the brainchild of some of our other board members, which I thought was a lot of fun. And we did that virtually to kind of still still get our name out there and still have a little bit of fun um, um, during, during, of course, the COVID lockdown. But uh, the convention, the turnout was amazing. Um, we, we, again, sort of look at that and, and it is what it is. We had a lot of people show up, um, day, day pass type people. And just because of the vicinity, um, we did experience that in 2013. We had a very large show. This one was even more, which I think is great for a quote unquote dead car brand. We were celebrating the independence of, of Saab. It's been uh, 10 full years, if you think about it, uh, 2011 to 2021. It's 10 years since the, the last Saab really rolled off the line. And um, it's just great to see the enthusiasm and obviously the local presence, uh, no doubt in New England is conducive to, to that many uh, showing up. But some numbers to share, uh, a, a rough approximate, we had about 650 people that were registered. And of that, we had roughly 350 cars, give or take, um, floating in, floating out. And, and that's, that's a rough estimate on a, on a, literally on a moving target as cars were coming in and coming out. So tremendous response and we're just super pumped and, and thrilled that that many cars showed up and showed out. So next year, uh, things are going to be a little bit different. The show moves to uh, Sturgis, South Dakota. 
which of course is where Tom Donny has established the uh, Saab Heritage Museum of the USA. So tell us how that's going to work and what you're expecting there. Sure. Uh, well, great segue to that. And uh, if I may take just a moment to to uh, to thank a lot of our, our key sponsors, um, we did have a tremendous response, and that was really exciting. Um, the Saab Heritage Muse uh, Car Museum USA being one of our, our key sponsors, along with the uh, Esab Parts, Oreo, um, of course, Mile High, um, out in Denver, Sports Car Service, um, out of Delaware, uh, Scan West of Seattle, and and of course, Elite Motors Local. Um, they're in, in the Albany area. We couldn't have done it without some of those uh, key title sponsors, as well as a whole slew of other people, which for Tom, we won't have to be able to cover everybody, but we appreciate them. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just a, a miracle that they're able to step up and support the community because we're, we are literally not to sound cliche, but we're literally all in this together. And I think anybody that truly owns a sob or gets their sob or loves their sob in any capacity gets that or else they wouldn't have it in their driveway. It's just how the mm -hmm. relationship is going to be, whether you want it or not. And so to, to talk a little bit about South Dakota, I'm excited about that. Again, as you mentioned, uh, the Sop Heritage Car uh, Museum USA is, is, is open and open for business out in Sturgis, right off the highway, um, just as you come into Sturgis. Sturgis, South Dakota, for those of you that haven't been there, um, it's a relatively small community. And um, one thing that we're gonna try to look to do different, and we'll be making periodic announcements about this is our model um, to overlay it into the Sturgis area is gonna prove to be a little bit of a logistical challenge, just given the terrain and the lay of the hotels and the size and uh, facilities and so forth. So we're gonna recommend some facilities um, that will have organized activities sort of hubbed around the museum and then um, likely break off sessions, if you will, at a, at a designated facility or multiple facilities. And again, that's all going to be announced. So a little bit of a change in the model, but we're doing it, uh, doing the best we can and we're gonna do it to support um, obviously uh, the museum and the enthusiasm around that because it is really awesome what the Donnies, um, as well as the contributors, as well as uh, Esau Parts, one of the, one of the main uh, donors of uh, part sales a portion of proceeds to that, what they've done in a relatively short period of time. I've been there myself okay. already and it's pretty cool and it's only getting cooler by the day, so. Yeah, that's awesome. We are um, looking forward to, the. well, I don't know, my wife kind of told me she may not make the drive to Sturgis. That's 22 hours for me and Mark, it'll be even more for you, right? You're, you're what about three days on that trip? Yeah, it's, it's going to be 26 hours and that's under ideal conditions. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, well but the museum's such a great draw. I think you're still going to have a big crowd nonetheless. Absolutely. And, and we understand that too. The good news is, is that it'll kind of feel like there's a dense population of sobs there, regardless of how many people fly in because the museum uh, uh, don't quote me on the total numbers, but uh, it's it's definitely in the triple digits how many vehicles are on the ground there and inside the facility. So there's definitely a lot of sobs to share, so to speak, and and uh, photo opportunities if you find one that you really 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 like. But we do expect that. I mean, the other great selling point for for those of you out there listening is uh, South Dakota is a great uh, vacation spot to begin with. If you've never seen uh, Mount Rushmore in person, it's it's really spectacular and it's definitely one of the I guess they'd say seven wonders of, of the U.S. Or, or whatever they're called and uh, national treasure for sure. But uh, if you definitely have the opportunity and the time, um, absolutely carve it out to, to go see that area of the country, which is very close to the museum. I think it's under 50 minutes or so roughly to actually see Mount Rushmore from the museum. There's also, uh, I think it's Devil's Tower just across the border into Wyoming. Of course, if you really want to go all out. You can book a, a, a trip to Yellowstone and things like that. There's plenty to see out West and a lot of beautiful places. And what, um, what better special thing to do than either in a sob or at least to come to see sobs. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how you'd put that any better. Yeah. And the Badlands are beautiful. There's so much uh, natural history and other things out there. So yeah, I think that's all super. So um, we have got uh, a few more. I don't want to cheat anybody here. So we're going to keep kind of talking until all these slides run through to show everybody uh, in the concourse when. You know what? And I, and I suspect everybody knows, but I don't know it's safe to assume. Uh, can you explain how you win concours, either you, Mark, or, or Daniel? How What's that all about? Uh, sure, Mark, you're welcome to jump in or I can speak a little bit about it. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how the judging goes, so that's going to be your level of expertise, no, sir. No, no worries. I, I did announce in the beginning of this I'm not a concourse judge. I probably need to get trained to be one because we've had some gracious volunteers, and they know who they are over the years that every year, because it's quite a challenge to pull that off, especially in the heat of the, the day. We've done these shows in California and Atlanta and other places uh, in August and in July to sort of ask somebody, hey, can you walk around a hot parking lot for, you know, for say, three or four hours? What could go wrong? But um, <laughs> So uh, we've had a few people that we need, we need to train some up and comers for sure. But uh, concourse is actually a pretty fun uh, process. And, and uh, the way I understand it is everybody starts with a perfect score and then maybe not the correct terminology, but to, to, to say you, you earn demerits based on uh, modifications or, or uh, non purist approved uh, factory spec stuff. Uh, in talking with some of the concourse judges, uh, of course, um, as the cars age, and in fairness to the spirit of it and the reality, they don't make the cars anymore. So reasonable modifications or catalog accessories or things that were, as a simple example, sold from 99 through 01 for the 95, but it happens to be on a, a, an 0395, things like that. I think they're, they're loosening the reins just a little bit. But I think what people, what I've personally seen is people don't take it as a criticism. I mean, you're setting yourself up to say, potentially your baby's ugly or, or your house is dirty, but um, that's what you get when you when, when you stick your neck out there. And I think that yep. people, from what I've seen, like to learn. And they uh, we've learned in the last several years, people really want those sheets back. So I announced at one of the dinners, I kept waving them around saying, you know, there's a lot of stuff in this hotel, but be sure to come by and pick up your sheets because uh, people want to learn how they can do better. And it's just kind of a fun way. I've seen uh, over the course of the year, seeing these shows and stuff, I, be talk, I'll be talking with people in the parking lot and they're like, hold that thought. I think the concourse judge is coming. I got, I got to swap my stereo back out or hang on just a second. Let me get the correct formats back in here. And they jump oh, around geez. and pull stuff out of the trunk and get it all ready to go. And, you know, that's how it is. You know, we met a lot of really interesting people. Uh, we just saw Ray Kay's uh, Red, I think, 9-6 right there. Uh, we'll have Ray on in the future. Uh, Greg Smith from uh, his 75 uh, 95 wagon that he bought on Bring a Trailer was there. And, uh, so won, awesome. Won an award. We're going to have him down the road. Uh, Matt Nicklay from uh, Esau Parts. So we, we met, a lot of great, met a lot of great people there that uh, we'll be featuring on future episodes as we roll along. So if I'm not currently supporting the, your organization, what's the thing that I should be doing, Daniel? Obviously, you're going to tell me to be a member. Uh, real quick, how do I get that done? Sure. Uh, uh, great great question on that. So, of course, it's uh, sobclub.com. It is the Sob Club of North America. We are a nonprofit. Uh, we do uh, publish uh, a new, uh, recently revised, um, awesome magazine called Nines. Uh, which basically celebrates um, and keeps everybody informed of everything that's going on in the community, uh, both uh, uh, past, current, and into the future. And it's a great way to support uh, support the club. So there's a nominal dues associated with being a member. And anybody that uh, participates, one thing that I'd like to say uh, now that we have the opportunity. So since we are since we are a um, since we are a club and we host these quote unquote private events in order to attend our quote unquote private event, you have to become a member. We don't force the membership on people because we want to leave it open to anybody that loves anything to do with sobs. So you become a temporary member by signing up and signing our waiver and joining our um, joining us on a day pass essentially as a temporary member. So we encourage people to continue that membership and support us. And uh, again, nonprofit, we, we do it out of the goodness of our heart and we do it to keep the brand alive that deserves to be celebrated. I mean, you know, I may take a tongue lashing for this, but there is a ton of car brands that have gone away that, um, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know anybody that that's crying about Hummer gone or dare I say Pontiac or Saturn or Isuzu or Oldsmobile yeah. or Mercury or Honest yeah. Suzuki. You know, the list keeps getting longer and longer, but Saab, Saab was special. We all know that. And it has a special place in my heart. I even, I mean, I'm not going to start crying now, but I tell you, I mean, sob means a lot to me and a lot to a lot of people. It's just something really special. Mm -hmm. so that's why the club exists. That's awesome. Well, you guys did a super job again. Congratulations on a good event. Thanks for joining us tonight and sharing a little more about it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. And thanks for what you do. You guys pull up an excellent program and we're excited to have this opportunity and uh, some of the names you just called off there. Lots of great enthusiastic people um, in, in this world that want to that speak sob and get sob. So uh, one last funny thing I'll say I was explaining uh, or it reminds me we're such we're such gearheads and 
a lot of people, I'm pretty good with names and faces and cars, me personally. And a lot of people are like, hey, what's that guy or what's that lady or who's the one with? But I always notice that everybody, at least at some events, they always just they always finish the sentence by saying, uh, if they say, what's her name? They're like, you know, the lady with the black 88 with the blah, 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 with the, with the 16 inch. Oh, they're like, oh, that's Janet. It's like we always, we can always figure it out when it's like, no, the guy, you know, he's got the blue top, not the black one on the 99. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Dave. <laughs> oh, that's so. great. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, cars become your identity in some ways. <laughs> and uh, that's how it happens. All well, right, my friend. Thank you so much. Good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Uh, take care, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, so we did not get through every single car and every single award, but uh, geez, if we left you out, I'm sorry. We're just going to have to press ahead here. You know, one of the things that, so we've seen a lot of really cool cars there, Mark, and uh, I Absolutely. think that um, some of the coolest were uh, those that were um, kind of modified, right? I mean, some of the, the, the Absolutely. cars. Yeah. We've had sobs that have been modified on airbags. We've had mm -hmm. them lowered. We've had them with different style bumpers, different style fenders, you know, um, fender flares, uh, different styles of wheels, every uh, iteration of, you know, tire and wheel combination that we almost guarantee we saw there at the show. Um, we saw roof racks and luggage carriers, you know, wrapped in the same color as the vehicle. It's we saw so many fun things. I actually saw a nine five there that had uh, the LED lights replacing the uh, um, the xenons. I actually saw a nine five with <laughs> little model airplanes inside of the headlights, and I'm just like, I I, I wish I, I could have grabbed that picture before the show, but uh, that was that was fun to see. Um, you know, and also Ben Hinkle, he did a complete uh, seminar on the friction testers, which we're seeing in the show right now. That was really fascinating to learn about how SOBs actually help contribute to airport safety. I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, we're gonna have Ben. We're gonna have Ben join us, and we'll do a, yep. a full episode on that friction tester. It's really pretty interesting. One of the most interesting things I got a big kick out of. Uh, was when the guys in the vintage subs, the two cycles were ripping around the parking lot. I mean, that was just a trip. Check this out. I was so impressed seeing those uh, cars just whip around that parking lot. That was amazing. They just uh, bark and snarl and sound like, uh, yep. like an angry wasp or a hornet. <laughs> On, on the drive home, my wife and I uh, passed uh, Ray K and Tom Donnie in a in a two cycle Saab convoy on the highway going 65 miles an hour, just <laughs> snarling along. It was it was really pretty cool. You know, one of the things that struck me, Mark, is um, I, I met a young guy there. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Mateo Morales, and mm -hmm. uh, and he actually won an award for the, I think the longest journey. So here's Mateo. In uh, he he had a 1989 900 mm -hmm. that he bought for uh, like 800 bucks a couple of years ago, and he's mm -hmm. doing some fix up work on it. And uh, he's 16 years old and drove that car from the mm -hmm. state of Washington to Albany, New York. That's amazing. Yeah, and, pretty impressive. And the best part about it is, is that this kid's 16 years old. You're thinking about how our car brand is, unfortunately, 10 years. Uh, into you know obsolescence from a corporate standpoint, but the people are keeping the brand alive, and young men like Mateo are exactly what Saab needs to keep going. All the young people out there doing all the modifications, bring enthusiasm to the car brand. That's absolutely what we need. We need all the young guys sharing that enthusiasm, going to cars and coffee, saying, "Hey, you want to take a look at my car? See what I got? This is a Swedish, you know, vehicle." It's so cool seeing all of the different young people get involved. And yeah. I just got involved back in 2017. I still consider myself a newbie, but there are <laughs> there are young uh, ladies and gentlemen that are getting into these sobs right when they're getting into driving. I mean, there's no better experience I think that you could have than just getting your license and then ripping it down the road, learning on a sob as your first vehicle. I, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine it being a better situation than that. Well, check this out. So I checked up on on Mateo just to see, you know, I was thinking, gosh, this kid's going back to uh, all the way to Washington. So I reached out and, and said, hey, are you uh, 
are you back yet? He said, no, I'm actually, uh, we stopped over in Indiana. Oh, and I said, hey, where in Indiana? I'm in Fort Wayne. Guess where he was? Fort Wayne. No way. No way. So uh, I connected with him and here I am driving his 89 uh, non-turbo 900. Doesn't know how many oh, wow. miles are on it. Uh, I, I was kind of ripping that thing around and giving it a little bit of a workout. Uh, but uh, the awesome. car drove pretty well. And so, yeah, he's he's going to be taking that back to the state of Washington. And, how you cool know, I that. asked him, I he'd never driven a turbo. He'd never driven a convertible. So I said, well, geez, why don't you drive mine? And so <laughs> while he did, we talked a little bit about young people and sobs and um, mm -hmm. And what's he think it's going to take to get young people into the hobby? So audio is a little tough, but give it a listen. Uh, I think people are just like afraid of the sob being like foreign, I guess. Uh, and the rumor that they're unreliable, they're not unreliable at all. Did you feel, uh, did you feel welcome by the older guy? <laughs> that looks like fun <laughs> yeah what a nice young kid and uh you know if he's the kind of guy that we can get into sobs going forward uh man so much the better for all of us right uh so uh, that was that was really a happy little accident uh to run into mateo that's you know mateo touched on a couple of important points think about it most people are afraid of sobs we I bet you if we can go out there and spread the message, we can definitely change people's minds. And I'm kind of actually impressed that he felt welcomed by the older Saab owners. I yeah. thought that was awesome. To, to, and that just speaks volumes about the community. It speaks volumes about the people who love their Saabs. It speaks volumes about the character of those people and how they're very open and sharing and willing to you know, accept a younger generation to share in that enthusiasm and joy. It, it blows me away. I agree completely. So I think we're going to close tonight with uh, us urging you guys, take your sobs to cars and coffee events, take it to car shows Absolutely. and engage people, uh, young people particularly, but everybody draw them in and, and kind of explain mm -hmm. what makes these weird old cars worth our time, attention, and all the love that we give them. And uh, I think we need that to keep the brand alive and uh, going down the road. So, all right, that's where we're going to park it tonight. Hey, Mark, thanks for uh, uh, joining me here. and. <laughs> Still happy that That's you and I it. both made it home without incident, right? That's uh, right. It was, it was, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, Julie. <laughs> uh, there's one guy who didn't quite make it home without incident, and he had to do a parking lot repair. And we're going to tell his story in a future episode. Uh, really impressed with what he was able to do to get that car home again. So we got a lot more to talk about. And we hope that you'll be with us every Thursday night as we're here on Sob Talk Live. Absolutely. All right, Mark, we'll see you next time around. All right, everyone. See you next week. And Lee, fun as always. You bet. Take care, guys.